Long ago, pirates ruled the seas, but the kingdom of Varuna enjoyed peace and prosperity under a wise king and the watchful eyes of his two master swordsmen, Radcliffe and Jihan. When these two fine soldiers vanished, the kingdom was left defenseless. The power-hungry Baron Diaz was quick to strike. First, he combined forces with the pirates to jail the king and secretly replace him with a wooden puppet. Not satisfied with just the throne, the Baron then recruited the former palace wizard to help him steal the kingdom's long-hidden treasures. The kingdom's only hope is the king's daughter, Alexia. Discovering the connection between the Baron and the pirates, Alexia sets out to find Flint, a famed pirate hunter wanted for treason against the Baron's new regime. Alexia knows that Flint is the kingdom's only hope. And hello, everyone. This is your internet super loser, Fox Marine, and this is what you would normally call a, uh, a terrible idea. But this is actually also called me fumbling my way through Alundra 2. Now let's get started. And this is actually my um, second attempt at recording. I played it on normal. What they don't tell you is normal is actually unfairly hard given the controls and the mechanics of the game. So please forgive me. We'll play this on easy. So I guess like I could start off with talking about why I chose this game to start things off with. Um, I think back in junior high, I used my birthday money to buy this game off of, um, I think it was like they had electronics boutique back in the day. And I, this might have been a bad idea since I may have carbon dated my actual age, but who cares but yeah I actually spent my own money on this game and I was like I looked at the back of the CD and I'm like ah oh, it looks like looks like Mega Man Legends but the dude has a sword and you know I you know like when you go through buyer's remorse and you just like you stick through it even though you know it's like deep down like I shouldn't have bought this that was me back then, and so like as a kid, I, s I spent like, like almost more than a week playing this game. So of course, like, you know, it's summer break, so you have all the time in the world. So I had this game. What edit? Why? What I ended up doing in the end was I, I was like, well, there's like a. There's like a point in the game where I just got tired of everything, and so I like, I, I told my friend, "Hey, you, do you want this game for like ten bucks?" I like, I even sold it at a loss. I, I had no problem. I was like, "Well, I got a game that I can trade you for," and I think I don't remember what I traded him, what game I traded him for it, but uh, yeah. Hindsight, like, it's not that bad of a game, because I'm like, I'm a fan of this aesthetic. Just not this particular aesthetic, like this part of the game. Because uh, you have our hero here, Flint, climbed in inside the uh, this uh, airship. And the inside looks nothing like an airship. And of course the... Uh, I'll tell you what, like whomever like they hired as a Foley artist for this game... Well, I'm not even sure if they have hired a, a Foley artist because some of the uh, some of the sound effects for this game is just horrid, just like this. So, okay, I didn't answer the question. Um, why this game? Um, it honestly wasn't that bad, and my tolerance for like what is really really bad is super high. And even then, like, this game is fairly competent. And I'm gonna do something where... I'm gonna do something here right now. Which I should have done earlier. Just 
no, not this, this view, because this, this close-up view is just, it shouldn't really be in the game. Like, this does not help, so this view, this view actually does a lot more for me. And granted that my only defensive maneuver is just jumping and running away, and this camera is, I'm sorry, like a lot of the times I'm like fighting with this camera. There we go, we find a uh, flint, finds a selfie that you don't look very attractive in. Why? Why even? Why do I look like this? Why? I'm 12. I'm 12 and I have a big sword. And uh, of course, um, Flynn over here is our silent protagonist, so we get to project whomever we want to be onto him. And so, he's a pirate hunter, as mentioned in that early cutscene, so we'll be meeting the pirates here. Right now. Right now. Right now. Oh, Jesus Christ. I can't stand it anymore. I gotta get off this flying hunk of tin. All this noise. This aeroplane is giving me a headache. I mean, you should Chill see the out, huh? interior. It's not so bad. I kind of like it. Besides, it's the Baron's orders. Like, if you saw that shit you two tutorial, or, yeah. Epic power the slide here. I wouldn't be caught dead floating up in the air like this. I tell you, it just ain't right. You'd be called a well, sky pirate. Actually, Father, a vehicle like this is probably a safer form of transportation than a sailing vessel. It's just so comforting to and hear Robin get so frizzy from the in, in, the air. in a game that Your probably air. came around Who gives a rat's behind a came out around the time of uh, a the Batman series. About what he looks like. A pirate only cares about two things. One of them is hunting for gold. Do you know what the other one is? Um, the hydrodynamic nature of the ocean's current? Thanks, Robin. You poor <laughs> misguided boy. Anyways, I think we should just make the best of the situation. At least that's what Mom always used to say. Aye, she's a smart woman, that mother of yours. That's why she dumped you. Why you? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> By the way, I tried checking for subtitles or captions. There's absolutely none for this game, so. <laughs> so for story beats like these, I, I really have to shut up. I think for like, um, yeah, like the, the reason why I, I'm starting off with this game is because like it just hasn't left my personal zeitgeist in terms of gaming. I mean, it's not bad to look at. I'm actually a big fan of this aesthetic. Like, I'm a big Mega Man Legends fan. We got like two and a half games, like Mega Man One, Mega Man Legends One and Two. Then we got that Tron game, and then. Three got cancelled. So but the charm of that those games were for me was this uh low poly but like super detailed um texture mapping, I would say. Alright, so And it's not just this game, I think um Tail Concerto also had this if I'm murdering the uh, the pronunciation for it, but Sola to Robo for the Nintendo DS also had this uh, sort of sort of style to it. I think we're just gonna listen into the um, to our favorite trio over here with uh, Papa Zeppo. 
Melinda better appreciate the troubles I go through for her, I tell you. Making me play nursemaid to a bunch of walk-in can openers. Now, now, Father, we took the mission and now we must endeavor to do our best. Now, of course, he knows. But do you know, those things running the ship are creepy. Yeah, they are. You can say that again. They even talk funny. Just listen. Yeah, whomever the Foley artist for this game needs to reevaluate what sounds he took for these enemies, or I don't know. Or it could very well be like a a uh, a deliberate design uh, design choice. All these every gee, gee, how much of a chatty neighbor, I might say. Have you ever tried chatting with them? Well, she got a point. She got them there. So, did they hear something? Well, of course, like, they're not gonna leave there. They're gonna, the game's gonna give us all the time we need. But what we need to do, actually, is to turn, turn on the switch. Which... Number one is kind of weird. So number one, I'm gonna go through here. I hope the enemies are, cause like on normal, these enemies are tough. They could get like a quarter of your health bar down. Let's see, and then you are on the toilet. There we go. Is there anything here? Nothing, just the toilet, okay. So, also, what I realized part way through my earlier recording is that going up against these guys, there's no benefit to it, to it especially if they don't drop anything. Because this, this game may be an RPG, but it doesn't. It doesn't work on the conventions, like, it doesn't give you XP. It's honestly just a crapshoot, but for areas like these, like taking out all these enemies is a requirement, so there's that aspect to it. Anyways. There, there you go. Alright, I need it. Yeah, definitely need that. Damn it. Okay, you cornered me. You bastards. God, I hate these, uh. I really hate these cutscenes sometimes because there are items that drop and and they do disappear after a period of time. So let, let's say like you kill off an enemy, a cutscene opens, but that enemy drops like drops something. The cutscene could be long enough for you to miss that item. And then let's heal up. Yes. Yeah, I know. Healing zone? Alright. That was it. Now, I said earlier I did record this. <laughs> I did record this earlier, right there, at like an hour or so. <laughs> so we <laughs> overwrite this. Because one, normal is super hard. And number two, my earlier recording, I kind of fumbled through that as well. So. Yeah, I mean, behind the scenes look here at Fox Marine Fumbles. And I was afraid like, hey, I, I'm, I've lost a bit of energy doing all that recording. And then I realized that um, there's a lot of things I could have done differently as well. Especially for the beginning... Uh, for, for the beginning parts of this... Uh, this playthrough so I don't really I don't really mind it's uh, you know that's more on that's more on me actually mm -hmm. now um, you know this is the charm of the those PlayStation man. <laughs> you know I how Mephisto created those things. So there's a lot of imperfections that you can see from here, that and it also reflects on the gameplay. Well. 
It seems to be some type of now. technology <laughs> that only Mephisto really understands. That's why the Baron wants us to keep our eye on things. I presume it means he still doesn't trust Mephisto. You're darn right he doesn't trust him. So if this were Metal Gear, that freaky wizard either. they'd be able to spot Flint right this, because this has happened to me like a foot away from the, uh, from the, from the wall, and they, s and enemies see me typically, but here, well, I honestly enjoy this sort of like light humor, light cartoonish humor. What the? And probably as a kid, this is why I played this for. I, I sank that much time so into you, it. Flint, what do you think you're you're, doing it's here? me, Flint. Not you again. Why don't you leave us alone? You get me, me money. He is now a wanted criminal. Yeah, I know. We got him. We'll turn him in for the bounty and get money. Me. I'm sorry, folks. <laughs> uh. All right, this is technically our my first boss fight, our first boss fight in this game. And a normal, he's just unfair. Like, like yeah, I think first try on this on normal, I died. And uh, throughout my last recording, I was thinking of um, any games, ARPGs that I tried, uh, that I finished before. And he's all mine. Well, where you can get him. And I couldn't, like, for the life of me, think of one. Of course, like. Let's see. Oh, dang it. So, um, like, for the life of me, I couldn't think of one. And towards the end, I, like, I figured, oh, hey, wait, I finished Dark Souls 2. I finished Dark Souls 2, but I don't really consider that like one of the old school action RPGs like this one, because this game is obviously meant to be a, lo a lot like a like a Zelda. There you go. So if this was a normal, I would have I would have eaten the ground after this fight. So I was a little fat. Think you could take me on with your bare hands? Aye. Well, let's see you take my patented skull buster, me boy. Are you gonna get it now? Thank I think once I'm done with this recording session, I'll look up who are the uh, voice actors for this game. Oh, he made someone mad. Thanks, Foley artist. Gosh, even like how they animate these enemies, it's it doesn't sit well with me. It's like like the serve bots in Mega Man uh, Legends, they're endearing. You know, those helmeted things and some of the enemies in Zelda, like they're endearing, but these I just What are you doing, Pop? Stop it. Yeah, we made him mad for wrecking his plane. Thanks, Tron. Uh, uh, guys. Huh? So it's kind of obvious, like, this game takes a lot of, like, oh, no! a lot of, uh, archetypes and concepts from games of the same period. So, like, you see a little bit of Mega Man Legends in here. You see Zelda. I also gotta look, like, if this game actually sold well during that time. I mean, it took my 20 bucks, so... And you, Flint! You ever wonder how you became haunted? Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! That's what you get for messing with us pirates! Have a nice flight! You get wanted for... 
taking down the bad guys, I guess. <laughs> you know, I almost forgot to tell you. We've only got three parachutes, so it looks like you'll just have to find some other way down. So, Zeppo's yeah. Skull Buster managed to take down the interior of the ship. Man, but like, I'm glad like this is a very short. <laughs> this is like a short area in the game because like that um that tutorial section is just made me want to throw up at one point. And we have a uh, finish that boss, and I think this is like a little bit of a mini boss. Fine, I, I can I can face tank his damage. Darn it, I, I missed out on currency. That's fine. So yeah, like I, I was like I the reason why I was thinking of a game like an ARPG that I've finished is because like is, well, number one, I don't consider Dark Souls 2 as a, or Dark Souls series, like, as a pure action RPG. Because, like, typically, there's a low skill level involved. This is just, these, I, I, I know this is, like, kitty Saturday morning cartoon sort of tropes, but it, it's just so endearing to see this on a game. And which again, you'll probably hear Father, from me a lot, which is a, but it's like a lot like Mega Man Legends. You'll just hear that from me at times during this playthrough. And so yeah, I was thinking like, there's never, I've never played an ARPG where I finished from start to finish. Like a traditional one. And it's funny because during that moment where I had this epiphany, I encountered a boss in this game where I, you know, I, I got bodied by this boss. And so, so I'm like, well, this is, it's not Dark Souls. It's not, you know, it's not that complex, but yeah, it does have that difficulty, but that's on normal. And so far, this game is fair on easy. I think, I think like hard, um, normal on this game is actually hard, and easy on this game is actually normal. It could be like a Japanese thing, but yeah, this is ooh, this is ultra rough actually. Here you go. Honestly, that should have killed Flint. And the whale, for like dropping that high, he should have just like pierced. <laughs> should have like pierced through the whale. Much like this, uh, this wind up key. And Flint is like what? Like 13, 14? This kid is like strong, you know what I mean? So you see this whale, I think 
transforming. And I do apologize, folks, if I'm, like, spoiling, like, five seconds ahead. Because I just played this, like, earlier this afternoon. And... I guess, like... I guess like play, replaying this like very recently, I guess it gives you a more fresher perspective as opposed to just silently experiencing things for the first time like this whale drilling, this whale about to drill an ass, a second asshole through, uh, through Flint and Flint somehow surviving. <laughs> whale I, I one thing about this game is that it has really awesome mech designs like uh like that airship uh <laughs> that airship earlier it has a pretty decent design and you got this mecha mecha zord whale that's having its way with you You made it to the end of the video. Good job! Well, a better job than what I've been doing. If you'd like more disappointment, check out these links. This is a